Hello, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to cover Windows Storage Spaces on Windows Server 2022 to provide fault tolerance and expandability. What is Windows Storage Spaces? I'll let Microsoft Jenny give a brief explanation. Storage Spaces can help protect your data from drive failures. It's a technology in Windows and Windows Server and is conceptually similar to redundant array of independent disks, RAID, implemented in software. These drives typically store extra copies of your data, so if one of your drives fails, you still have an intact copy of your data. If you run low on capacity, just add more drives to the storage pool. Thank you, Jenny. The server for this demonstration is running Windows Server 2022 standard with 64 gigabytes of RAM, eight processing cores, 12 one terabyte physical disks, and two 254 gigabyte disks that are RAID 1 mirrored at the host bus adapter. We'll cover installation and configuration, disk failure, repair and recovery from disk failure, and expansion of capacity. If not already, open Server Manager, read and close the Admin Center dialog box. Under File and Storage Services, select Disks. All disks to be added to a storage pool must have an offline status. Click Storage Pools. Under Storage Pools, in the highlighted primordial area, right-click and select New Storage Pool. Read and click Next. Provide a name and an optional description. Select the disk you want in the pool or select all. Here, we're going to select all disks. Leave the allocation to automatic. Click Next, followed by Create. When completed, close the wizard. Right-click the newly created pool and select New Virtual Disk. Select the pool you just created, OK. Read and click Next. Provide a name for your virtual disk and an optional description. Click Next. Since we are not using Enclosure Awareness, click Next. For this example, with 12 disks, we're going to select Parity. We're going to select dual parity as that will allow for two simultaneous disk failures similar to a RAID 6 setup. Use thin provision to allow future flexibility. Since we have 12 disks that can sustain a two disk failure, we're going to specify an initial size of 8.5 terabytes. Click Next, followed by Create. Click Close to start the creation of a volume on the virtual disk. Read and click Next. Select a virtual disk created and click Next. Accept the recommended volume size and assign a drive letter. Likewise, you can mount into an empty NTFS folder. Select your desired file system and provide an optional volume label. In this exercise, I'm going to use the REFS file system. Click Next, followed by Create. Close the wizard when complete. In Storage Pools, Virtual Disks, right-click on the virtual disk and select Properties. Click Health and note the statuses and close Server Manager. Open Windows Explorer and you will see the 8.5 terabyte drive. If mounted to a folder, open C drive to see the mounted folder and its capacity. The virtual disk and volume also appear in disk management. Now we're going to simulate a disk failure. Open Server Manager, File and Storage Services. Storage pools. Under Virtual Disks, notice the yellow caution symbol by the virtual disk. Right click the virtual disk and select Properties, followed by Health to see details. Depending on the failure, 
The storage pool may also have a caution symbol. The physical disk section will show which disks have failed. Right click the pool, select properties, followed by health to see the health warning and degraded statuses. However, in Windows Explorer, the drive is still there and the data is intact. The faulty disk has been replaced. In Server Manager, File and Storage Services, Disks, you will now see available disks. Under Storage Pools, they should now show as Primordial Available Disks. Retire the failed disk via an administrative PowerShell session. Close the PowerShell session, refresh Server Manager, and ensure the failed disk usage says retired. Right click the pool, select Add Physical Disk, and add the replacement disk. To rebuild, we now have to remove the failed retired disk. On the Storage Pools page, find the faulty disk. Right click and select Remove Disk. Acknowledge the dialog box. Click Yes. This process may take some time. Please be patient. When completed, another important dialog will appear for you to acknowledge. Refresh Server Manager and do the same for any remaining failed disk. Again, refresh Server Manager. The pool and virtual disk are now healthy. The great thing about storage pools is that we can easily increase capacity while retaining resiliency by replacing the existing disks or adding additional disks with new ones of higher capacity. This is where resilient storage pools differ from RAID arrays. Here, we're going to replace several of the one terabyte disks with eight terabyte models, one at a time. The procedures are similar to those for replacing a failed disk. However, with a larger replacement disk, there is typically no need to manually retire the disk being replaced. Physically remove the disk to be replaced and add the new disk to the server. Add the new primordial disk to the pool. Remove the old disk. Refresh Server Manager. Note the pool's increased size. Repeat the steps for each disk to be replaced. Extend the virtual disk. Click on Volumes, right click the volume, and select Extend Volume. Extend to the maximum size. Also, with the storage pool capacity increased, you can create additional virtual disks and volumes if desired or necessary. Note, you can either extend the disk and volume after each physical disk replacement or later when multiple physical disks are replaced. The time has come to add a direct attached 60 drive JBOD enclosure to your server. Using storage spaces, we can easily add additional disks to an existing fault-tolerant virtual disk. Once your enclosure is attached via SAS, iSCSI, or fiber channel, and the drives are presented to the operating system, we can create additional storage pools or extend current ones. When replacing an existing disk, replace each one at a time. When extending by adding additional disks, you can add all the new disks simultaneously. Mounted folders allow for a single volume namespace similar to Linux and overcome the 26 driver letter limitation. A volume can be mounted to both a driver letter and an empty NTFS or REFS folder and can be nested within other mounted folders. 
In this demonstration, we're going to remove the D and E drive letters and mount our volumes to a folder on the C drive. In Server Manager, File and Storage Services, Volumes, right click the volume. Click Browse under Access Paths and select an empty folder. If the target folder is not empty, Windows will not allow it to be used as an access path for a mounted volume. Optionally, set the drive letter to None. After the path is selected, click Add, followed by OK. Now, we're going to mount the second volume into a subfolder that is located in the previously mounted volume. Open Windows Explorer to see and navigate the mounted volumes. We have covered the installation and configuration of Windows storage spaces, the identification of and recovery from a disk failure, how to expand and increase storage capacity, and the various methods of mounting a volume in Windows Server 2022. These steps and procedures are also valid for Windows Server 2019, 2016, 2012 R2, and 2012. Did you know that Storage Spaces is also part of Windows 10 and Windows 11 client systems? We'll cover that in an upcoming video. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.